So last week, uh, we started talking about multi-tenancy. Mm -hmm. We had Tails down here. Yes. Um, and, and we talked about some use cases. And uh, in Discord, I went to the channel. <clears throat> and it looked like a lot of the, the chat around it was like, hey, yeah, this is a feature primarily geared to MSPs. Right. And to that, I'd say, yeah, you're, you're right. But there's also an entire use case around internal IT. And then I immediately said, but why would we use this, Josh? I did, right? You did. I'm You're like, like yeah, but what is it? What is it for? Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of wanted to talk through some use cases for internal IT. Um, the, the first one that kind of comes to mind is like, hey, maybe you do corporate IT in a franchise model. Like a parent-child domain. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Like uh, franchisees come on, you provide IT support, um, and they sometimes they go. Or some maybe you work at a university um, and different colleges have different IT needs requests. Mm -hmm. There's different admins that manage each of those different colleges. Mm -hmm. um, that's a good case for multi-tenancy, right? Yep. The university can, might have an overarching policy that can be coming from the, the parent. Mm -hmm. uh, but then each college can kind of run with their own subtenant. Yeah. We had that as the Nevada System of Higher Education. Yeah. Where we had like a parent like IT department that they man mainly handled like networking stuff for us. But uh, I could totally see that being a use case there. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you've got just separations of concerns within the same organization, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe help desk one does X, Y, Z. Help desk two does the other stuff. Yeah. And they shouldn't be able to deploy things to each other's devices. Or maybe it's something simple. Um, like I want all of my workstations separated from all of my servers because I don't want the tier guy, tier one guys being able to, you know, wreck server side infrastructure. So I went ahead and in our tenant of Banff here, I created three subtenants <clears throat> and I broke them out into the the basics, right? I haven't moved anything yet, but I wanted to show you what it looks like, right? So when I dive in here, um, this is completely separate. This is completely new. Um, the thing that is following down right now, and keep in mind that this is an alpha, is users and permissions, mm -hmm. right? So even though we're like logically separating stuff out here, um, if I'm a admin in Banff, I'm automatically an admin in all of these subtenants. Like that's going to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, I separate out end user workstations, servers. This can look completely different. And this is where I'm going to put my stuff. Yep. Uh, so that nobody else breaks it. This yep. is the, the Josh is no touchy. Mm -hmm. um, and really creating this um, is super easy. You can't create tenants when you're in a subtenant. You have to right. do it from the parent. Yeah. Right. So this is as easy as it is. Once you've turned it on from settings, create tenant. Brock, do you want one? Uh, sure. Please move his weirdly named stuff over there. Get it out Brock of there. Stuff. Right. Perfect. Create. Here you go. This is all fresh and new. This is all Brock stuff. Um, and we can just run through the basic setup wizard here. Um, and we run through and it's going to create groups for you. It's going to create automations and it's going to build it all. And now you can get those devices over here into different tenants. What does that process of getting the devices over look like? <clears throat> right now, the process of getting those devices over is getting the unique tenant installer okay. That's what it is. for them. Um, what that you know changes into and morphs into, I don't know. So Fortress already is asking for uh, package tagging. Now, I'm guessing that's something you're going to have to go into Discord and specifically ask for. Is yeah, so so that that's that's the intent here, Fortress, is like I could have a package here, uh, maybe this one pack word, package, password package. I like that, pack word. One pack you word made password. a new word. <laughs> right, where I can choose it and I can apply selectively to not only the parent, but also individual different children. Mm-hmm. Um, so when it you know kind of comes down, maybe I'm over here in Brock stuff. Mm -hmm. I might see an automation that's from here. It's enabled, and maybe there be, is a column that says inherited from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. These are things that could happen. Mm -hmm. This is an alpha. This is the feedback. This is where we want to kind of get the, the mm -hmm. stuff that comes back in. Yeah. Okay. We uh, want to hear. We want to hear what you want, right? Yeah. We're building it out. Yeah. So we need put it hear. in there. Yeah. Put so it in come there. to the Discord. Let us know what you want. What you're thinking about. Um, and, and if you're going to try it out. So okay, another question, can you install PDQ connect to install PDQ connect for a different tenant or does it clash? Uh, they, they do clash. They do clash. Um, I've done this. It's kind of ugly. Uh, the long story short of this is you have to do it in one step mm. in connect and it's error prone, right? Mm -hmm. So all in a single step, uh, and a little bit of scripting, you're going to uninstall the version that's there. Mm -hmm. 
uh, then you're going to install the new version. The child. But keep in mind, it's like as you uninstall it, you're going to break the one that has the reporting and you hope it shows up in the other guy. Mm, okay. Um, so that's one of those things that that we're working on as well. Of like, how do we gracefully move this stuff over and keep that there? So it's just parent-child rules from the domain, essentially. These are parent-child tenants. Yep. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Um, so that was kind of the, the little recap on multi-tenancy. Mm -hmm. um, I think up next, we wanted to show, uh, with Windows 10 coming into life, what are you doing to migrate? And one of the options we have here is in Connect. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this was pretty timely because we just got a request on Reddit, I believe. Somebody was struggling pushing the upgrade out with Connect. Something with their script or something. Yeah. Yeah, they sure were. Um, so I, I actually went through Discord and I, and I saw that one. So I'm going to show two different ways that you can do this in Connect. But I'm going to come out and call this out right out of the gate mm -hmm. and say, look, we have a product for this. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So Smart Deploy actually does this really well in place upgrades to Windows 11. Just one button. You just click it. <laughs> it is and it seriously does it. one button in a few minutes. And it's, it's like, done. yeah, it's beautiful. This one yeah. is a little bit harder, but we're going to show how. So this is this script was in Discord, this right? This was in and Discord. This was old PS Noob. So uh, Marcel, I believe, give did credit. that. I, I don't remember. Well, Will someone them. please go find it? Like, uh, I should have remembered and wrote it down, but I didn't. But I Andrew shamelessly ripped this from the Discord okay. uh, to highlight here. Um, so uh, what this script is doing is it's basically coming in here and it's going to create a directory. In this case, you know, C Win 11 temp. Um, and then it's going to use the built-in web client PowerShell to go out and it's going to download the Windows 11 setup.exe, the online installer. Mm. So it's going to pull that down. And then what it's going to do is it's going to start the process of that exe. So when it does this, you feed it an argument list here, quiet install, skip EULA, auto upgrade, blah, 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 blah. One thing that I want to call out here is this flag here, uh, the no restart UI. Mm -hmm. So what that means is it's going to go and it's going to stream these install files. It's going to install Windows 11. And when it gets to the point that it needs to reboot, it's just going to do it. Oh, what's There's, the user going to do? Yeah, it, the, the user's just going to be like, my computer just restarted in the middle of the day. So be careful. So, full contact IT. Yeah. <laughs> full contact IT, because it's going to take a while um, but as it reboots there. Um, so just keep in mind that this is is going to be kind of heavy, especially bandwidth kind of heavy. Yeah, mm -hmm. how big is the install? Gigs? <clears throat> I think it's like probably to stream like four and a half, five gigs, okay. something like that. Okay. Um, but it's going to do it in the background. Okay. Uh, so this is kind of the, the what I'm calling the online version of the upgrade. Mm -hmm. Both of them are going to require an internet connection, mm -hmm. but this is one that needs to maintain a connection. Okay. And this is in place upgrade. So your user files are going to remain where they are. It's just going to upgrade to Windows 11, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Just clarify. So everything's going to stay there. Okay. It's going to upgrade. Um, it's going to look like your deployment failed, right? In connect. Wait, why? It's going to call this a failure. Oh, okay. If it's successful, it's going to call it a failure. Um, or it's going to say that it actually ran. Mm, right? Okay. So you're going to get false positives here. Yeah. Right? Because Connect is just going to say, hey, I ran the thing, and it's successful. I ran your script. Now, it might actually fail, but you don't know that. You won't get that information back. Why? Because you're just, all Connect is aware of is that you said, hey, start the process. Okay. And if the process started, then yeah. it's success. Yeah. As far as Connect is concerned, it's like, hey, I did my job. Yep. You know. Okay. So keep that in mind here. You might get some okay. false positives if you're looking at like, yep, successful, but it's still the old version of Windows or the old version of Windows 11. Well, it's because you just started the process. You didn't actually run. Okay. So build some groups. In a, a few webcasts ago, we built some groups around Windows 11. Mm -hmm. Probably go back, dive into those. Obviously, try those. one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Try one, try two, try okay. three. Okay. Okay. Uh, here's the second way to do it. Okay. Uh, the second way to do it is going to use the actual Windows 11 ISO file. Okay. So instead of going out and pulling the installer down live, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to start off first by copying that ISO over to the device. Locally. Locally. Okay. Save right. a little bandwidth. Well, I mean, you're not really saving okay. bandwidth. We're just trading when it gets downloaded. Mm. Right, because this one I'm going to download. The first step is get the ISO there. All the files are on the device, mm. and then we're going to execute locally versus the previous one we were streaming it. Okay. Well, I do like this a little bit better though, because this like it's 
The other one, like you start the process and you're just like fingers crossed, right? This one is like, hey, you at least get to see whether or not your file transferred to the device yeah. and it's on there locally so you don't have to worry about, you know, dropped internet connection or something in the future. Yeah. And if you like it fails or it gets interrupted, you don't have to stream all those files again. They're still there. Just re-kick off from like this step too. Yeah. Marcel is also saying you can copy it from a local yep. network. You could do that yeah, too. Like your, your first Point command should just be like a copy from file server to local. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so here's here's the next script. Um, the the thing we're doing here is we're gonna mount the disk image, um, and then we're gonna grab the 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 drive letter from that mounted disk image. Um, so we have to look and we have to get the name of the ISO that we're calling here, where the image path name is, because we actually don't know what it's gonna mount as. It could be drive D E F, depending on how many disks are in there. I don't know what Windows is gonna call that. So we're gonna grab that. We're gonna store it as the volume drive letter. Um, after that, we're going to create a Windows 11 upgrade directory. And this is where we kind of want to be done with the ISO, right? So we're just going to do a little robocopy here for the source and destination path from get everything from that mounted ISO, put it in this directory over here. And now I've got the entirety of that ISO local. Mm -hmm. So if anything goes wrong at this point, I have that extracted ISO mm -hmm. that I can just call. Um, and then just like the previous one, just call that setup.exe with whatever params you want. There is an entire Windows doc on Windows setup.exe and tons of params that are in there uh, that you can pick. Um, in this case, the, the change that I did here was I'm going to accept the EULA instead mm -hmm. of skipping the EULA. Okay. You can, you can mess around and do whatever you want there. So are you... I'm nervous about it doing it. I'm going to tell the users because I'm I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You either tell the users you're going to do this or this is something that you fire off after hours. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Okay. Right. You fire off it mm -hmm. in testing both of these. They both take about the same amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, it was anywhere from 10 to 15, sometimes 20 minutes, depending on what was there. Okay. Um, you can save yourself a lot of headache by checking that your devices actually meet the requirements. Oh, the hardware requirements, yeah. Yeah, gotcha. the hardware requirements, the disk space the requirements, space, yeah, yeah. target appropriately, uh, so that you're not getting like these successes of, I ran the script, but then your devices ever, aren't ever upgrading. Mm -hmm. So targeting is gonna Smart. be your friend there. And these are kind of your it. only options right now because 20, uh, Windows 11 24H2 is a brand new build. Yep. So there is no enablement package to take you from 23H2 to 24H2. Yep. You either have to do the in-place upgrade or a full new image. Yeah. Right. So those are your, those are really your only options. I love enablement packages. They're usually very easy, usually very small. Just turn on whatever features that Windows tells it to turn on, and you're good to go. Yeah. But that's not an option. Yeah. Either. Um. And like Chad's saying, like th these both of these methods work in uh, deploy inventory. Yeah. Like you just kind of have to do the translation between my connect package and a deploy package, but. They're all about the same. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks for watching this segment from PDQ Live. If you like this, you'll love the full show. Check it out every Thursday at 10 a.m. Mountain. Oh, and like and subscribe, please.